Welcome back, guys. So, I hope everyone's week has been good. Um, what a tumultuous week it was, turn five, for uh, the Royalists. Uh, <laughs> their combined army of Rupert and Maurice got attacked by the combined armies of Fairfax, Cromwell, and Waller. And it was quite a catastrophic defeat, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we lost a lot of troops and we lost Maurice himself. So that was not good at all. Severely set back the Royalist plans. In the north, uh, the race for York, the Royalists lost um, and the Covenanters have taken it. Um, on the upside, uh, Charles was able to seize London. So it wasn't all bad. But militarily, militarily speaking, it was pretty bad in the field. Uh, the Royalists got trounced. Good news for the Parliamentarians. They are starting to build quite a good base in the centre. Uh, with the Scots coming down from the north, they are cutting off the Royalist supplies in that region. Uh, so Parliamentarians uh, slash Covenanters, things are going going better for them than they have for about the past five turns. Uh, whilst for the Royalists... Who knows? <laughs> uh, I think they've still got a good chance. Uh, we've just got to make sure that the actions that they take are the best. <laughs> Welcome back, Kamikaze. <clears throat> um, one thing I just need to say is kind of an apology from my side. Uh, this week has been very hectic with work. Um, and also I had some technical issues. So I've basically lost two thirds of my campaign folders. Uh, so the names that you suggested for the commander of the royalist forces in the north and in the south i've lost those so if you can let me know what they were again then i can get those things back up and running uh but next week everything should be hopefully smooth again in regards to getting the uploads done um, in a timely manner so let's get to it um so turn six let's start off by finding out who's going to get the initiative so we've got our three dice we've got blue for the scots red for the royalists and white for the parliamentarians. And Scots get a five, followed by uh, the other two as singles. So we'll just re roll those. And then it goes royalist and then parliamentarians. So royalist, uh, so Scottish. Second is royalist. And then third is parliament. Well, that's good news for the royalists because they will be able to start. Uh, Shifting their troops without getting caught. So, is that Lord Gravely for the North Army and Sir Edward Fitzrobert? That's perfect. Yeah, thank you very much. Needed that. Awesome. Cool. Uh, next up, we need to find out what the month we are moving to. I think last turn we were in May. Um, so, this month, yes, we were in May. Let's find out what it's going to be this time. And it's a five, so one, two, three, four. So it's going forward three months in May, June, July. So we're going into August of 1643. And for the weather, let's find out what weather we've got. We've rolled an eight for August. Clear sky. Huh. This cannot be England or the UK, because we have had weather, which has been clear for the last, well, every single turn so far. Where's the fog? Where's the rain? <laughs> anyway, so, but good news for the battlefield front. Now, historical events. Um, October. No, there's nothing there. So we're all good on the historical level. Next up, we have got our random random events. So what we'll do is we'll work down the list, starting with the Royalists, Charles, Rupert, and just put those names in for the other two. So for the North, uh, it was Lord Gravely. And in the South, it was Sir Edward Fitzrobert. Cool. And then for the Parliamentarian slash Covenanters, we've got Fairfax, Cromwell, Waller, and then Leslie in charge of the Scottish forces. Okay, so let's go for shots. So he's rolled a 36, 
And 36 is a strategic ruse. The loser takes his strategic actions first this turn. Hmm. 36. Okay. <clears throat> Next up, we've got Rupert. And he's rolled a 66. 66 is a oh, damp weather. So, 66. Damp weather. I don't know why I see it. Roll a d20 each turn. And if you roll a 15 or above, uh, you fire with minus one. Uh, I guess that's going to be a negative to their shooting. Um, I guess it's saying that you know, the powder gets wet, so only some of the troops are able to fire. Next up, we have Lord Gravely. And he's rolled a 94, so that's nothing. And then we've got Sir Edward Fitzrobert rolling again, 94. So nothing. What are the chances of that out of out of a hundred rolling the same thing twice in a row? <laughs> uh, next up, um, only five. Guess. Wouldn't that affect both sides? Uh, which one was that? The, uh, the yeah, I see what you mean about the damp weather. Yeah, that's a good point. It should do. So yeah, I want to take a note of that. Was that sixty six? Yeah. Uh, affects both sides. Yes. <clears throat> yes, we're in the battle. It will do. Good. Good comment. Good call. Next up, we've got Fairfax. Let's see what he's going to have. And he's got an 80 on the nose. And 80 is a random raw non-artillery unit becomes conscript. So we've just got conscript artillery for Fairfax. So that just degrades one of their units basically down to just a conscript level. Uh, then we've got Cromwell, and he's got a 76. And that's a distinguished gentleman, a random non-gallant general or colonel becomes gallant. So plus free cohesion to one unit. So one of their units, colonel, general, has uh, inspired his men, so they gain a little bit extra uh, for the fight. 76. Then we've got Waller, the wizard, and he's got a 93. So, is that 90? Is that, yeah, 93. So, that's nothing. And then finally, for Leslie, we've got a 74. And that is patriotic townsfolk. Add a unit of rabble slash conscripts to your army in the form of pikemen. Oh, that's got a nice one. Not that he needs extra troops, but good for him. 74. Conscript. Pikes. Okay, interesting. So next up, uh, we are going to go and check what the final votes were for the different options for the parliamentarians and the royalists. So just bear me one second whilst I find where I'm going to. Would help if I share the screen. There we go. So, for the Royalists, the option picked was option one. Interesting. So, let's write that down. Option one. And that was for our Northern force to move to Liverpool and then dig in for a defence. And then all the other armies are to merge on Oxford ready to reorganize and then attack when the opportunity presents itself. Fair enough. For the parliamentarians, the votes have gone for option three. Fairfax is to pursue Rupert and attack him where practicable. Uh, Cromwell is to take Oxford and the Covenanters are to send a small force to take all the northern territories whilst the remainder march on Liverpool. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> so the Scottish get theirs first, their option first. So they were sending one of their, one half of their force, I guess, 
north to try and capture Newcastle and I'm not sure what that county is, but <laughs> those two counties. If you live there, I'm very sorry for not knowing which county it is. And then the other group is going to be making its way to Liverpool. Uh, seeing as they get the initiative, they will catch up with this uh, Royalist force uh, before they're able to move because they don't have the initiative. So it looks like Lord Gravely is in grave danger. So that'll be the first thing that happens this turn. I think seeing as he's got only a few units with him, he is just going to try and withdraw from the battle. Um, otherwise, he'll end up just getting annihilated. Uh, but he will take casualties in his attempt to withdraw. So that'll be interesting. Um, and the Scots will move there too. So they will fall just short. They won't be able to besiege Liverpool this turn. It'll be next turn. Um, and this force will most likely, as long as they don't get wiped out, will make it to Liverpool. Um, next up, we have the Royalists. So we ask for everyone to try and merge on Oxford. So Charles will get there with two. This unit will get there with two, and Rupert will go to Gloucester. Yeah, he'll just get to Gloucester this turn. So they will be merging, which is quite useful. And then as for the uh, Royalists, uh, sorry, the Parliamentarians, we've got Fairfax and Waller, because they're both together, uh, who will be pursuing Rupert, so they'll have moved one and then they'll be coming down. And then we had Cromwell, who we ordered to head towards um, Oxford. So he would have moved down to there and he will actually be attacking Oxford. So we will have one fully pitched battle, one uh, fighting withdrawal, and one army not involved at all. <laughs> he needs to scamper. He does indeed. <clears throat> I mean, I think next term we might have to send Waller on a raiding party. Talking from a parliamentarian perspective, take his cavalry and just try and take um, the territory of Wales and just destroy the royalist support over there. But we'll see what happens. So let me just quickly write down these actions, these battles, sorry. So we're going to have another battle in Oxford. Oxford. And that's going to be Charles and Edward Fitzrobert versus Cromwell. And in the north, we've got Gravely versus Leslie. Interesting. OK. Well, because of the fact that the Royalists, uh, sorry, the Parliamentarians didn't get initiative this turn, I thought it could have been very devastating. If they had gained the initiative and they could have caught Rupert again, it could have been game over because we could have lost that entire army. So not as terrible as I thought it was going to be, which is pretty good. <laughs> uh, looks like the king has a good chance against... Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, if the king can crush him, then that gives us the strategic initiative again to then start pushing north, recapturing the lost territory, um, and start whittling down the parliamentarians once and for all. Then it's just the Scots we've got to think about how we uh, deal with them. But yeah, interesting. Interesting turn ahead by the looks of it. Mm. Uh, just whilst we're on, does anyone have, or do, does? Yeah, does anyone have any questions about the campaign uh, so far? Anything they want me to clarify? Uh, that would really swing things on. Yeah. Um, if not, then we can call. Uh, bring things to a close now that we know what we're up against this turn but interesting definitely interesting the way things are moving um i've been enjoying the campaign just whilst i've got time to talk so far it's been very interesting to see how the sort of the ebb and flow has gone and uh, we started off on this side of the battlefield well the map uh with royalist victories and then it swung all the way around to that side um yeah it's pretty historically accurate, I guess, because they had battles raging here, there, and everywhere. Um, I guess the English Civil War was slightly different to, say, the American Civil War, in that although you've got county lines, they, they're they not really like state lines, um, and you did have different territories within each of them that were loyal to one side or the other. Um, yeah, so battles could be fought at any time, and that's kind of what's happening here. Armies just marching <laughs> wherever they feel 
feel like going. Anyway, thank you all very much for taking your time today, but also thank you for getting involved in the campaign. Oh, so what's this? Does the loss of London affect the parties? Yes, it does. So with, uh, let me just read it out. Baton, otherwise I might say it wrong. Um, <clears throat> where is it? When it comes to your campaign points, um, let's see what it say. So let me just find the page that I'm looking for. Campaign points, there we go. So both sides start the game. I'll just read out so you get a better understanding. Both sides start the game with five campaign points. Um, both sides collect one campaign point per five territories. So for every five counties that you own, you get one campaign point per turn. And you also gain two campaign points per London and Oxford um, and Edinburgh. So there are a few additional ones for the cities. Um, oh, no, sorry, here we are. Yeah, holding London, Oxford, and Edinburgh gives you yeah, two campaign points. Uh, if you win a battle uh, and it's a major victory, you've destroyed the enemy, routed them from the field, the winner gains seven and the loser gains one. If it's a victory but not uh, a complete rout or destruction, the winner gains six and the loser gains three. Uh, if it's a minor victory where you win just based on sort of casualties, but both armies are still on the field, uh, win against five, lose against three. And if it's a draw, both sides, sides gain two. And then you spend, or we spend the campaign points in a few different ways. You can spend them to claim neutral territories. Uh, you can reduce enemy territories to neutral. Uh, you can fortify a territory you control. You can increase an army's cohesion. Um, so you can spend one cohesion, uh, sorry, one campaign point to boost the army by one cohesion level, which, to be honest, is what I've been spending most of the points on recently, just to try and keep the armies in the field. Um, five, you can save points to use them to adjust roles on the strategic level. Um, so this I haven't been using because we've all been playing sort of collectively, but if you were doing it at home, uh, then you could use your points to boost your initiative role, et cetera, like that. So you can save them for those sort of things. And then number six would be you can spend your campaign points to recruit extra regiments. So five would be for a conscript pikeman or musketeer, seven for a harquebusier or dragoon, and 10 for artillery or cuirassiers. So you can spend your points basically how you want to try and either boost your uh, economic output by taking territories or boost your military strength slash units. Um, I've been kind of limiting myself more to just the claiming of the territories and the boosting of the army cohesion. But yes, so just to, again, answer the question in full, uh, taking London will give the uh, royalists an additional point or two um, each turn. And I hope that long ramble uh, <laughs> didn't bore you too much. Uh, any other questions before I head out? No? Cool. Well, like I said, thanks everyone very much for taking part. And I look forward to finding out what the outcome is for this turn. And long live the king. <laughs> thanks, guys. Take care and see you next time. Oh, yeah. Influencing the initiative. Yeah. Um, I think, if, yeah, as I said, if you were playing sort of across the table with someone else or even on yourself, it would be because that way you can save those points up um, to boost up your role by one or two. And that way you've really got to consider, do I spend them all now or do I save a pool of the points for later? Um, however, playing sort of online, it's kind of tricky to ask everyone, what do you want me to do spending of the points? Should I save them? Uh, so I've been just erring on the side of caution on that. But yeah, I think it would make a very fun, um, fun game if you were playing it at home. But yeah, thanks very much, guys. Uh, have a good day and I will see you next time.